Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and for today we are going to discuss another disorder of the gastrointestinal system which is your appendicitis. But before we proceed to the actual discussion, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the like and comment sa video na ito, plus share this with your friends. When I talk about appendicitis, this is actually one of the most common abdominal conditions that we actually heard not only to medical practitioners but also to laymans o yung mga tao na walang relasyon sa medical field. Okay? And when I talk about appendicitis, we already know that this is a condition of the gastrointestinal system or at ng ating bituka. Okay? So let's define what is appendicitis. According to the book of Brunner and Sudart, appendicitis is a condition of an inflammation of the appendix. In appendix, as we already know, okay, in nursing, appendix is actually an accessory organ in your gastrointestinal system located at least um, doon sa initial part okay, of your colon or the initial part of your ascending colon. Now, your appendi appendicitis is actually the most common cause or the free frequent cause of acute abdomen, especially in the United States. And of course, the most common reason why people is having an abdominal surgery. Okay, madalas na operahan po kasi ang mga pasyente na nagkakaroon ng appendicitis. Now, what causes your appendicitis? So, paano nga ba tayo nagkakaroon ng appendicitis? According to our book, there are several causes okay, that can lead to the formation or to the condition appendicitis. And the number one, which is the most common, is the occlusion of fecalit. So, the occlusion of fecalit is actually a hard fecal matter. So, isang matigas po itong maliit na tae or fecalit, taing maliit, na sumiksik doon sa ating appendix. And according to our book, this is the most common. Okay, this is the most common etiology. Aside from this, okay, your appendicitis can also be due to the kink appendix, okay, or na, na kink na, na, na appendix. Another one is the presence of lymphoid hyperplasia. Okay, another one is the foreign bodies, occlusion to include your seeds. Okay, yung paniniwala natin, yung mga buto ng, yung maliliit na buto tulad ng buto ng kamatis. But hindi naman po buto lang ng kamatis. Okay, so any foreign objects or foreign bodies na maliliit na pwedeng sumiksek doon sa ating appendix. But again, the most common is gonna be your fecalit or your hard fecal matter. And of course, it can also be due to the presence of tumor or bukol sa ating appendix. Now, okay, who are more at risk of developing this condition? So, the precipitating factor of your appendicitis is a male person or a male ages 10 to 30 years old. According to studies, okay, a lot of those who develop appendicitis are actually within this age group and most of them are actually male. But it doesn't necessarily mean na kung ikaw ay lalaki, na nasa edad 10 hanggang 30 years old is common ka na mag is magkaka magkaka appendix appendicitis ka na agad so you still need to have the other factors or the etiology for you to develop an appendicitis but according to study okay most of them who develop this condition are males ages from 10 to 30 years old now what are the clinical manifestations how are we going to assess if we already have the condition or appendicitis Paano tayo malalaman kung may appendicitis tayo number one is which is the most common is the right lower quadrant pain the right lower quadrant pain or also known as your um pain in the mcburnis point later on i'm going to show you the picture of the mcburnis point Okay. Another one is your anorexia. Anorexia is a de or decrease in appetite or hindi makakain. Okay, ang mga pasyenteng ito. Another one is nausea. Okay, the feeling that they want to vomit. Okay, Nalulu na naduduwal, nasusuka. And of course, your low-grade fever. Since this is an infection, appendicitis, itis, you would expect that if there is infection, probably mayroon din fever ang pasyente. But in this case, it's just a lower low grade fever so other clinical manifestations will be um assessed upon a physical examination to include number one just like i mentioned earlier your mcburnis point so mcburnis point is basically a local tenderness in the right lower quadrant area so in the right lower quadrant area so you'll be able to pinpoint this area okay 
So that is your McBurney's point. So if you're going to divide your abdomen into four parts, we have your right and your left. We have your upper and lower. So that's right lower quadrant pain, just below your umbilicus on the left, on the right uh, area. Okay, and a positive McBurney sign is when a significant pain elicited by palpating this area in the right lower quadrant. And this could mean appendicitis. Aside from that, patient would also uh, manifest your Robsing sign. So Robsing sign is still a pain sensation that can be felt okay, when the examiner palpate the left lower quadrant. Okay, the left lower quadrant and paradoxically causes pain that will be felt in the right lower quadrant. So basically, nagpress ka, okay, you palpated the right left uh, the left lower quadrant and the pain radiated and intensifies in the right lower quadrant. So from left to right ang pain natin. Okay, from the left, dito nagmanifest yung pain natin. So that's your Rob Singh sign that is done through palpation. Another one is your hamburger sign. Hamburger sign is basically a combination of your anorexia plus abdominal guarding behavior because of the pain sensation. Aside from this, patient will also manifest SOAS sign and your SOAS sign, by the way, put a star because this already came out in the board exam way back 2010. SOAS sign is a condition wherein a pain occurs in the right lower quadrant when patient is placed in lateral position and hip flexion so basically patient is in left lateral position and when you flex the hip the pain will be intensified or felt okay so ang clue word natin yan lateral position and hip flexion aside from that okay obturator sign so obturator sign is a sign wherein there is a pain felt when patient's right leg is abducted okay pag inabduct mo ang pain niya so the patient is in supine position when you abduct the leg to the the right foot, okay, okay, from the right foot, when you abduct that, that's your obturator sign. So the pain will felt or intensifies, okay, in the right lower quadrant area. So that is your obturator sign. Another sign, okay, still under your appendicitis is your jarring sign. So your jarring sign is also known as your Markle sign, and this is a pain sensation in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen that is elicited by dropping from the standing on the toes to the heels with a jarring landing so basically you're going to ask the patient to tiptoe and uh, drop abruptly drop okay the sole okay or the heel of the patient and patient will feel an intense pain in the right lower quadrant once uh, the patient did that um did that uh test Okay, so itiptoe siya. You will ask the patient, please tiptoe. Then sa, sa kanya ibagsak agad yung kanyang heel. Okay, so that would intensify the pain in the right lower quadrant. So that is your jarring sign. Okay, now how are we going to uh, diagnose or assess further this condition? Of course, hindi mawawala dyan ang complete history of the patient. Kung nilagnat ba siya, nasusuka, okay, or hindi makakain. And of course, part of that is also to conduct your physical examination to identify the different sign, your SOAS, jarring, Rob Sings, Umbergers, and of course, your McBurney's point. Aside from that, we're going to take uh, the CBC or the complete blood count of the patient and the complete blood count will demonstrate an elevated WBC indicating that there is a presence of infection. Okay, these are the presence of infection. Another one is a CT scan. A CT scan will actually visualize the right lower quadrant density and an enlargement of the appendix. So basically, it will give gives us a visual, um, a visual aspect of what it looks like the sa ating right lower quadrant area, and it shows that there is a quadrant right lower quadrant density plus an enlargement of the appendix. Another one, diagnostic test, is we have to perform also your pregnancy test, okay, to the patient. Your pregnancy test is used to, to rule out if the patient has an ectopic pregnancy because they do have almost the same manifestation. And take note that ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy that occurs outside the uterus. It can also occur intra-abdominally, okay, at 
pwedeng banda sa right lower quadrant which will sometimes napagkakamalan nating appendicitis but in yung pala ectopic pregnancy so we are going to perform pregnancy test to rule out ectopic pregnancy at ma-confirm natin that the condition is really appendicitis and the last one is your urinalysis to check if the patient has your um UTI okay UTI or urinary tract infection now how are we going to uh, take note of the complications so there are several complications of appendicitis so appendicitis can lead to the formation or to a condition called your peritonitis but peritonitis is due to the perforated gangrene appendix okay so basically pumutok yung appendix and whatever content of the appendix like for example fecal matter that fecal uh, that fecal matter is actually um uh, has a presence of a lot of bacteria in microorganisms and ang ating peritoneal cavity is actually sterile and since sterile siya na exposed siya sa germs it can cause an inflammation irritation in that area that may lead to the uh, formation of or, or to the development of peritonitis or inflammation of the peritoneum inflammation of peritoneum Okay. inflammation of peritoneum due to the perforated or, or gangrene appendix aside from that abscess formation can also occur portal a ple, a pile plevitis or a septic thrombosis of the portal vein so these are just some of the complications but the most common is the perforated or gangrene appendix that may lead to the formation of or development of peritonitis for the management, we have to take note that you should not give analgesics. Do not give any form of analgesics or pain reliever or any type of analgesics to cure the fever. Why? Because um, analgesics will decrease the pain sensation na nararamdaman ng pasyente. And that actually is not a good sign pagdating sa condition ng pasyente because a uh, decrease in pain sensation or a sudden loss of pain may indicate ruptured appendix okay we are not giving analgesics to this patient because okay baka mapagkamalan natin na magaling na yung pasyente yung pala is nag ruptured lang yung appendix niya okay akala natin umepekto yung analgesics but in a, ang nangyari pala is nag ruptured yung appendix kaya nag decrease yung pain sensation Okay, nag-decrease yung pain sensation. So, do not give analgesics. Another one, do not give hot compress, enema, and laxatives because this increase gastric motility and it may lead to rupture appendix. Okay, and of course, manage the condition such as correcting and preventing fluids, electrolyte imbalances, dehydration, and sepsis if they are present. Okay, uh, for the surgical management, Okay, this is actually the most common treatment that we're going to do or perform to address the condition, which is your emergency appendectomy or the removal. Okay, removal of appendix. So the removal of appendix. So this is the removal of your appendix. And after the procedure, the post of care for this patient is that number one, you have to position the patient in high Fowler's position. This is to decrease the tension on the incision site. And of course, um, the abdominal organs to reduce pain, to decrease tension on incision and abdominal organs to reduce pain. So you position the patient high Fowler's position. The drug of choice, if in case the patient feel, feels pain after the surgery, is your morphine sulfate. But of course, you have to monitor because the morphine sulfate is actually um, a very strong uh, pain reliever. Okay. At part siya ng mga controlled drugs so that you have to modify, uh, you have to watch for this patient because they may suffer from complications such as your respiratory um, paralysis okay, due to morphine toxicity. Okay, and another one is the diet. So after the surgery, the patient may uh, be on diet as tolerated but you have to start with fluids first. So that is your appendicitis, guys. If you do have any questions, please feel free to comment it down sa ating comment section. Pakiabangan po yung ating mga next videos about your gastrointestinal disorders. And again, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe to this channel, like, share, and comment. 
this video. Thank you very much and see you in my next video. Bye for now.